Good morning students. Now, today I am going to discuss with you the basic concept that why do metals displace hydrogen from dilute acids as well as water. Whereas non-metals do not show any such displacement of hydrogen from the dilute acids as well as from water. Okay. Now, the basic concept behind this is that metals are electron donors. Right? Metals donate electrons and you know gain of electron is reduction. So, metals are electron donors as well as strong reducing agents. Hence, they help in the displacement of hydrogen whether it is water or it is a dilute acid. Here also we have to take care that the metal must liberate electrons. So not all metals do displace hydrogen from water or from dilute acid. Only those metals which can readily, quickly lose electrons and provide those electrons to H positive ions present in water as water is a polar solvent or in an aqueous solution of an acid. So, what actually happens is children, pay attention that when there is a metal and there are hydrogen ions, then metal donates electrons to the hydrogen ion and the hydrogen ions after gaining the electrons first change into atoms and then two atoms of hydrogen combine to form a molecule of hydrogen thus liberating hydrogen for example sodium now you know sodium is monovalent in nature, its electrovalency is only 1. So it needs 2 atoms of sodium to change 2 atoms of hydrogen, 2 ions of hydrogen into atoms and 2 atoms then combine to form 1 molecule of hydrogen. As you know that sodium is a highly reactive matter and it displaces electrons quickly. So this reaction of sodium metal with water, that is sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide which is quite stable along with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Now children, this reaction is highly exothermic. Now when the reaction is highly exothermic, it means the heat is being liberated. And this heat causes the burning of hydrogen gas. So hydrogen evolved catches fire. Whenever sodium reacts with water or potassium reacts with water. On the other hand, when calcium reacts with water, yes, calcium liberates hydrogen, forms calcium hydroxide, but mind it that there is no fire. Right? Why? Because the heat generated during this reaction is not that high, which will set hydrogen to fire. So, yes, hydrogen is being evolved, the bubbles of hydrogen are there, which stick to calcium metal, it becomes light and starts floating on the surface of water. Even sodium and potassium, when put into water, yes, it leads to explosion and they also start dancing on the water because of the hydrogen bubbles. Right? So that is why metals like sodium and potassium are kept immersed in kerosene because the reaction is highly exothermic and it may lead to fire or explosion. 
So this is the case with sodium, potassium and calcium. When we come to the metals like zinc, magnesium, so they do not react with cold water. Magnesium reacts with cold water at a very very slow rate. But yes, magnesium reacts with boiling water. But metals like zinc, iron do not react with water even when it is boiling. Then how do these react? These metals react with steam. When they react with steam, then you can see there is zinc oxide. Now why oxide? Why not hydroxide? Yes, it does form zinc hydroxide which is unstable and it further decomposes and the final product is zinc oxide with the liberation of hydrogen gas. And for this activity like the reaction of aluminium, iron or zinc with water, you have a diagram in your NCRT books in which there is a glass pool which is kept wet with water and then hot metal, maybe aluminium, zinc is kept there and the reaction takes place. Now we come to metals which are lower down in the reactivity like copper, lead, silver, gold. Now children, these metals do not react at all with water, whether it is hot or it is in the form of steam and the metals are wet. Now why so? Because these metals do not readily lose electrons which change H positive ions into hydrogen gas. So this is the chemistry behind displacement of hydrogen by metals when they react with water. Now we come to the acids. If the H positive ion is by Mixing an acid with a metal, then again the same thing happens and metals, they liberate electrons which are gained by H positive ions present in the aqueous solution of an acid and hydrogen gas is liberated. Again children, metals like sodium, potassium do react with dilute acids. The reaction is vigorous with the evolution of hydrogen gas. But the metals like you know iron etc they are less reactive so the reaction is not that vigorous with acid but if we heat then the reaction becomes faster but if we talk about copper lead silver gold these do not show any reaction with dilute acid reason being the same that they do not readily lose electrons which will be accepted by H positive ions present in the aqueous solution of water. Now, acids like hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, they do show these reactions, even acetic acid. But if we talk about nitric acid, so if we add here nitric acid H N O 3 right so hydrogen gas will not be evolved why there will be no hydrogen there will be no hydrogen because this nitric acid is a very very strong oxidizing agent. The hydrogen produced will be quickly oxidized to water. Yes, there are metals like magnesium, manganese. They do show reaction with very very dilute nitric acid and liberate hydrogen gas. So thank you children. I hope this topic of displacement of hydrogen gas liberation of hydrogen gas by the action between metals and water, metals and dilute acid is clear to you. Thank you.